Well, I think both ways. I think this game come down to uh, they were able to run it a little bit, and we weren't able to run it. Uh, it felt like we lost the line of scrimmage at times, and uh, you know they they uh, played really inspired, and, and we weren't able to get it going. Everything was pretty tough, and then um, you know we dropped back, and the protection was you know up and down. At times it was good, and at times it wasn't. We got some negative yards plays. You opened up the game, uh, the 33-yard run by, by Will. It seemed like a running game, obviously, there. You know, the the line blocked all that run. What you see there? And how did you feel after that? Day? I, I mean, starting the game felt great. You know, I think uh, those, those two drives felt really good. Um, you know, and then that turnover, uh, you know, really hurt that, that next uh, that next series. I think Tremaine turned it over, and, and that certainly was a Huge play in the game. Yeah, they, they had a short field there. Uh, I know they get the 46 yard. They're, just real quickly, their kicker, um, he, he kicked some long field goals. I know all year, though, he's been solid. What did you see from this thing? Man, it was unbelievable. The one he kicked in in the wind, the 50 yeah. yarder, was you know right down the middle. And I think that's, uh, you know, it's tough, you know, when you, when, uh, if you're on the other end of those, uh, you know. We, we've missed a lot of field goals in, in those co close games. And, uh, proud of our guy, Ryan McCrone, for making his, I think it was a three for three. And, uh, you know, go out that way, uh, proud. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, I know they get the huge play. Uh, the, the first half is what the uh, yeah. biggest play first half. 60 yard. 60 yard run, and it gets called back for 15 yard, but uh, Teron Nibbins makes some good play. Uh, yeah. Another senior that was awesome, and and, and that's that's hard if you're on that sideline to, to just make a selfish act and not not get in the, the end zone there. And our guys battled, and uh, you know, great turnover in the red zone by a senior Teron Nibbins. And, and you guys responded uh, in, in a way by bringing it down, getting inside the five um, but twice. I mean, you know, just really. Kind of bite your teeth there in yeah. terms of having several field goals twice in that game. Uh, I know you want to get the touchdowns, and uh, ultimately in the end, you know, it, it, it kind of bit you. But uh, talk about the struggles there in the red zone. Yeah, been in struggle all year long. Just the red zone offense. You know, we, we move a little bit and then get down there. And, uh, you know, we just last year we had Paul. You know, when we were able to do some different stuff, and this year we never found found a great answer. We had two third and shorts that we came up. Uh, you know, and end up having to kick it, you can't do that. It just, I mean, uh, in terms of kind of not being as sharp on offense, it, just, it seemed like the passing game, uh, a lot of drops, um, there's a lot of pressure on Jesse, it's, these sort of things you're hearing week in, week out about in terms of that. Um, but well, how do you think he kind of handles that uh, in terms of all that? I'm, I'm really glad Jesse's coming back another year and he's going to be a great player. I think uh, their skill is better than our skill. I think that bottom line. Um, I know you get the big PAT block too um, after they get the touchdown. Yeah, that was huge. You got the score all off the kilter there, and then they started having to go for two and ended up could be the difference in the game. <coughs> and stopped on that last drive. How about Jesse's run? Unbelievable. You know, he, he's not that, you know, he's not a great runner. He's actually pretty solid, and, and uh, we're, we're trying to develop that with him a little bit great to see um, but if you watch that play you'll see two wideouts blocking that I mean was just really getting after and that's the kind of effort that we want this program built on and um, super proud of, of that play and, and Jesse's year. The special teams in general played a pretty big role and yep. I think you guys probably won that special teams battle with the punt nips their guy and then uh, you guys get it and score a touchdown uh, yep. on that. and then they have uh, Bobbled, pump, and sack them, and then that bobble they take yeah. off. And yeah. It was a great play by Al Young because it looked like yeah. uh, he was about to get the first down, and Al made a great play. Uh, just talking about that, I mean, they're, they're being able to get down the field and score on that final drive, but that's kind of what their offense is pretty good at. I mean, this Patrick Smith second half was, was huge against you guys. Uh, you know, what did you kind of see from them on that final drive? 
Man, kind of story all year. I think we could have played with with 12 people off defense, and they're just their their skill was better. I mean, we that last play it was what's called two man. We had a guy man under, and a guy sitting right over the top of that. You know, that type of route should be picked. It's just you know, they 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 out executed us. Uh, uh, you know, I think their skill really showed up. I want to talk a little bit about the seniors. Um, a big group, I mean, 28 of them. Coach, what, what separates uh, this senior class from the other two senior classes that you've inherited? Well, I just think the, the progress been made and, and the, the buy-in factor, and I know, uh, you know most of these guys didn't necessarily recruit, but they really bought into what we're trying to do. Um, I think they really could see uh, the tide start to turn. And, my thought is I hope they take comfort and I hope they'll be really proud of, of the years to come of SEMO football. And what was the transition like when you did inherit this team and these seniors? Was it, you know, how, how, how has it been them buying into it? Because they were young when you, when you took them. Yeah, yeah, I think the buying factor has been good for the most part. You know, we got a pretty high character team. We do well in the classroom. We do well off the field. You know, for the most part, we don't have stupid penalties. You know, I just think that our margin of error is really thin. You know, we're, we're good enough to, to stay in all these games, but we're just, we don't have a talent to be that much better. And so it's just going to come down to, uh, you know, one or two plays, one or two scores in the final, and we have been able to come on the good side of those. I think you see kind of the balance in this conference a lot. Um, with a game like this, I mean, TSU's played some teams close, and they beat UT Martin. Um, you know, what do you take away from from at least a one point loss to a team like this? This is a, this is the closest game they'll see today. I don't know if you saw any scores, but this is the closest game they'll see today. Everything well, else is a lot. I mean, you know, you can't let the re the results define this. You know, the one thing football teaches you: is delay gratification. You can do almost everything right, but you may not win still. Like you, you have to just keep stack and keep building, keep pressing on and eventually it'll fall. And so, uh, you know, really good football teams in this league. We've caught up, you know, uh, we hadn't got blown out of the game yet, you know, in last year and, and certainly uh, my first year we did. So we got to find a way to get over the hump. I think it uh, starts with recruiting, looking forward to recruiting on a, on a new weight room some of the new facility stuff that we're doing and then hopefully uh, you know, we, we keep elevating our recruiting classes. Oh, Coach, you mentioned, yeah, the tough losses there, you know, not blowout losses. Oh, how can you build on that between like, this one and the Jackson State game? So, well, I just think, uh, you know, the confidence is there. They know we're, uh, we're a much improved football team. And so now I think People will just look to, you know, what are the little things that we can do to get over the top. And, and so uh, I know you go to every day and feel like a win because we could have. Yeah. You know, we're the, the best, worst team out there. Um, what are some of the things you learned over the course of the season? That's a great question. You know, um, this week, and, and, and it's been such a tough, tough year, sometimes you lose your why you love football or why you coach. When you don't have those results sometimes your why gets lost and I just really feel like I found my why back again this week and, and understand really the reason I do this is making a difference in young people's life and ultimately you won't know my record for another 20 years and hopefully in some small way I've impacted 100 men um, so that they're better husbands or better fathers uh, <coughs> leaders in the community and, and ultimately that's my why and these results will come, and I gotta, I gotta remember why it is I, I coach and the, and the kind of difference that I, I want to make. How much of a challenge is that? Follow that up. I mean, you're a competitive person. You, you, you surround yourself with up to your players who are competitive. How much of a challenge is that um, to balance against that? I mean, it's being competitive. I mean, you know, perspective is hard. I, I mean, I don't have perspective necessarily let alone these 19, 20 year olds that, that are working really hard to try to, to get that. And, and ultimately, we set a goal to win the OVC. 
We did last year, we did my first year. And so what happens is a, a immature kid will see that, well, we didn't get our goal, we lost. But ultimately, it's what we're becoming in the chase of the goal that matters. And our issue, are you a better player? Are you a better person because of the chase? Because you tried to chase that, that goal, then it's a success. And so you just got to really redefine it. But, you know, it's hard in our world. Uh, it's, it's all about wins um, or losses. And, and so you just got to try and help these kids with perspective and, and understand that. Um, kind of with that, you know, the seniors that are now leaving, you know, brought a lot of leadership to this team. Um, you know, how do you replace that now moving forward? Well, I think we have a good culture going right now, and I think that thing will, uh, you know, continue. I, I learned, one of the first things I learned from my first year, second year is, is it doesn't matter. Whatever you got done last year won't affect next year. Like, we have to start over in our culture. We have to start over in our day-to-day. -day. We have good people in our program, and so I think the, the leadership and those type of things um, will come. Well, just to touch on it too, how about Roper Garrett? Uh, what has he kind of meant uh, for this program? He finishes with 13 tackles today, um, and I know he's on that that career list. Yeah. yeah. What has he meant? He's he's been just a rock solid foundation of our defense and our program. Three year leadership council. He walked on, earned a scholarship, tough as nails, from Farmington. And, and what I want this program to be all about is. You know, good players in the area staying here, have pride playing for their university at Simone. He's brought up.